going to be always difficult to solve a case if you don't have a body. Tonight, we hear from a forensic science professor about the challenges police may face as they search for evidence in cold cases. This after last week's announcement by an Oklahoma sheriff that Dennis Rader or BTK was a prime suspect in a nearly five decade old cold case. Brandon st sat down with a professor from Wichita State today. Brandon, how difficult is it for police to investigate these cases all these years later? Well, guys, it all depends, but David Clam, who worked with countless crime scenes for the KBI, says the most important thing in any murder investigation is the body of the victim, something the Osage County Sheriff Eddie Verdon is missing. This is prosecuted without remains, but it's a very difficult uh, endeavor to do that. David Clam with Wichita State's criminal justice program says the key component in any cold case homicide is the body. But after nearly 50 years, the investigative process becomes much more complex. 50 years is going to be awful tough. It almost turns into uh, something uh, of an anthropology, anthropology or archaeological uh, endeavor, something like that, to find something, then to link it back specifically to one of your victims 50 years ago and to a suspect today. And even after finding the victim, there has to be that important link. So you're going to have to find something that whether it has DNA on it or has can be identified as belonging to to the victim that you can then place with your suspect, whether it be Dennis Rader or somebody else. A case nearly five decades cold that DNA might help identify the victim, but linking the suspect to that victim is the hard part. I mean, we may have some mitochondrial DNA or something like that to work with identifying the body, but uh, as to foreign DNA or something like that as to, you know, who might have been involved with the death. That's, of course, going to be a long since degraded. In any case, for the forensic evidence to work to solve the crimes today, it had to be collected from the start. Hopefully that there was good old fashioned police work at the time when the case started that enough information was collected that can help us today. And the Osage County Sheriff's Office has said they are still looking into that link between the 1976 disappearance of Cynthia Kinney from Pahuska and Dennis Rader. Back here in Kansas, the sheriff has also reached out to investigators in Hayes, reference a 1983 disappearance of Mary Lang and another case in McDonald County in Missouri. I reached out to McDonald County today and have not heard back. As far as the Mary Lang case here in Kansas, the KBI says that they continue to explore all theories with this case, but they do not have any evidence at this time that links Dennis Rader to the investigation. Thank you, Brandon. Now, despite the KBI saying it doesn't presently have evidence that links Raider to the disappearance of Mary Lang, the Osage County Sheriff says that a review of his manuscripts leads them back to the 1983 cold case. Mary Lang disappeared in 1983, as Brandon just said, and was last seen while on an errand, running an errand for the law office where she worked as a secretary. Her car was found with the door partially open and her purse and other items inside. Investigators later found her coat and keys in a box under a bridge just north of Hayes. Sheriff Eddie Verdon says Raiders notes lead them to believe that he could be a suspect. Been involved with one up in Hayes, Kansas. Uh, there was some family in that area that they spent some time out there as well as work things that took him out there. The sheriff also says other notations could connect Raider to another Oklahoma disappearance. He has shared his findings with the agencies responsible for these cold cases.